The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Well, let's see now what Gildersleeve has been up to. I doubt really that Gildersleeve himself could tell you. Since the day he learned that his old flame, Leela Ransom, was pledged to marry another... He has lived in a daze, busying himself about unimportant things and trying to put out of his mind the thought of his impending loss. But inevitably it has come, the moment he has been dreading. It came when he wasn't looking. He was lingering late at the breakfast table, scanning the paper and putting away a few fried eggs when the doorbell rang. Toast in one hand and napkin in the other, he rose and stepped to the door, wiping his mustache as he went. Oh, pardon me. Hello, Leela. Uh, I've come to say goodbye, Throckmorton. Uh, let me just put this toast down someplace. There. Well, uh... I might not see you again. That's why I came over now. Well, I'm glad you did. Glad you did. Um, you're leaving today, then? Tonight. Oh, tonight. At 9.15. 9.15. That's when my train goes. Train? You're going on the train, then? Yes. Well, I... I've brought you a key to my house. I'd like to leave it with you. Uh, Judge Hooker's handling the house for me, of course, but I thought if he wanted to show it to anybody, why... This is the key. That's the key. Uh... I'll take good care of it. I'll hang it on a nail or something. Uh, that's the key to the front door, not the back door. Uh, there's a different key to the back door, but this is the key to the front door. Oh, I see. Well, I'll tell them to try it on the front door. If they have any trouble, tell them to push down a little. Uh, push down a little. Uh, push down and then turn it. Yes, yeah, turn it. I see. Well... By the way, I want to thank you for your wedding present. It was simply lovely. Oh, uh, it was nothing. Well, it was lovely, and you shouldn't have done it. I'll write you a formal thank you letter, of course, as soon as I get my stationery, but I wanted to thank you anyway. Well, thanks. It was really lovely. Uh, glad you liked it. Uh, tell Julian Henry not to bust it. You have to handle it kind of easy, tell him. Oh, Julian Henry is very careful. He's a doctor, you know. Yes, I know. Uh, doctors have to be careful. I suppose. It's sterling silver. Yes, I noticed that. Lovely. Uh, what do you do with it, Throckmorton? Do with it? What, what do you think you do with it? It's a combination corkscrew, bottle opener, cheese knife, and pickle fork. I knew it was something. But when I came to list the presents, I didn't know what to write down. Oh, I think it's lovely. Thanks. Well? Well, I suppose there's nothing to do but say goodbye now. Yes, I... Uh... Oh, uh, by the way, here's the bill of lading for those crates I expressed for you. You'll need this. Oh, thank you. I do hope it wasn't too much trouble. Oh, not at all. Well, uh... You're leaving tonight, you say? 9.15. 9.15. On the train. On the train. Well, goodbye, Throckmorton. I do hope we'll always be friends. Friends? Oh, sure, sure. Naturally. Well, I guess I'd better be going now. Goodbye. Oh, Leela. Yes? You sure you won't come in for a minute? Many things to do, Throckmorton. I'm afraid I can't. Oh. Well. Goodbye. Goodbye. That's a heck of a way to say goodbye to a girl. Well, it's a heck of a way to say goodbye to me. Nuts. Why didn't I ask her if I could drive her down to the station? Who left this football here? Leroy, confound it! 
Well, tell him not to leave his football lying around where people can bump into it. Mr. Gilsleeve, you planning to go out tonight? I don't know, Bertie. I haven't decided. I don't know what I'm doing tonight. Oh. Too bad about that dish. I wish I had some glue. I could fix it if I had some glue. Glass glue. Yeah, let it go. We'll get another dish. Gonna be hard to get another one like that. We got that one with soap chips. Soap chips is hard to find. Yes, well, never mind. Last time I went to market, I laid in two dollars worth of canned goods we didn't need just to get one box of soap chips. Then when he looked under the counter, he didn't have no soap chips. At least that's what he said. Uh-huh. It's getting so things is just as bad under the counter as they are on the shelves. <laughs> Pretty soon they'll be as bad in the basement as they are under the counter. Then what'll they do? Guess I'll have to dig. Miss Gilsey, you feeling all right? Perfectly. You don't seem to talk much. I'm reading the newspaper. I'm trying to. Would you rather read today's paper? Huh? That's last week's paper you got there. Oh. Where did I get this? That's the paper I put under the toaster to keep it from burning the table. Uh, funny, I didn't notice. Here's today. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Mr. Gilsey, now have you decided? Uh, decided what? About tonight, whether you're going out. Oh, if you want to go out, Bertie, go ahead. I have no plans. Oh, I don't want to go out if you're going out. That's all right. You go ahead, Bertie. Well, thank you, sir. I'll go phone Lily B. Now, why did I say that? Maybe I will want to go out. Darn it, why didn't I offer to drive Leela to the station? Of course, there's still time. I could call her up and no. That's just what she'd want me to do. I wouldn't give her the satisfaction. If she wants to marry this fellow, let her go ahead and marry him. Let him drive her to the station. Let him come all the way from Savannah and drive her to the station. Hello, Libby. Where were you, upstairs? There's one thing sure. I'm not going to sit here all evening biting my nails. Oh, well, I talked to Mr. Gilsey and he said... Oh, Bertie, uh, just a minute. Hold it, Libby. Yes, sir? I don't like to change your plans, Bertie, but about this evening... Yes, sir? I uh, haven't quite decided. Oh, hold everything, Libby. I'll call you back. No, it don't look so good now. Well, yes, I know it's kind of short notice, Eve. I would have called you sooner, only... Look, Eve, I don't like to ask you to break a date, but if you could just see your way clear to do it just this once, just this evening, it would... Well, that's just the trouble. I tried everybody else. Hello? Hello? You hung up. What's the idea? Hmm. No, what? Miss Gilsey, do you think... I haven't quite made up my mind yet, Bertie. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Leroy, don't slam that door. How many times... What are you doing home in the middle of the morning? Teacher sent me home. I got a cold. Oh, for heaven's sake. For a little cold? What are you doing home? That's my business. Stop sniffing. Go get a handkerchief. I've got one. Then use it. Okay. Come here, Leroy. Let me help you. I can blow it. What's the matter with him? Don't bother your uncle now. He's making up his mind. Making up his mind about what? He don't know, I guess. That's what he's making up his mind about. Hey, Unc. Can I go to the basketball game tonight? No, certainly not. But it doesn't cost anything, Unc. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. That's not the point. I can perfectly well afford to send you to the basketball game if I want to. But you've been sent home from school with a cold. I don't know what they sent you home for, a little cold. If you'd stop sniffing, you wouldn't have one. Bertie, I guess you better put him to bed. Oh, Unc. Well, then get out of my way and let me use that telephone. Oh, sure. Here you are, Unc. Who are you calling, Unc? Judge Hooker. None of your business. If I put on my rubbish, could I go? No. I keep warm, Unc, honest. Leroy, can't you see I'm telephoning? Guess he isn't there. Wonder who else in the Jolly Boys I could call. Don't tell me you're going to play poker again tonight. That, Leroy, is my affair. We play for very small stakes anyway. Gosh, I can't even go to a basketball game and he plays poker every night in a week. It's not every night in a week. Uh, oh, uh, Peavy? Uh, Gildersleeve. 
Uh, say, Peavy, I got to thinking. How about a little game of penny ante this evening? You and the fellas. Give you a chance to win back some of that. Well, why couldn't you? Peavy, it's not every night in the week. <laughs> Leroy, go upstairs. <laughs> Look, Peavy, we played last night, granted. And we played the night before. But how long was it before that that we played? Just ask her that. Then tell her what she can do. Show her who's boss, Peavy. Peavy, you know what you are? You're a ninny. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Nuts. Well, uh, I guess I spend the evening alone. Might as well get used to it. Won't be the only evening I'll spend alone. Evening after evening, with nobody next door. No Leela, nobody. Windows dark, shades drawn. No Leela. She... No, Leela. <laughs> What'll I do? Give me that phone. Five, eight, three, six. Peavy, you gotta do this for me. I'm asking you as a personal favor. If you ever call yourself my friend, Peavy, get the fellas over here tonight. You'll have a lot of fun, Peavy. We'll play cards, we'll play games, we'll do anything you like. We'll have a million laughs. If you love me, Peavy, do this for me. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a minute. Everyone knows that a dollar doesn't go very far these days. Still, the family is just as hungry as ever. And that's why we're always glad to remind you of a wholesome food that's high in food energy and very economical, too. That sounds like a build-up for one of your craft food products, Mr. Lang. You know I'm referring to parquet margarine, a spread for bread that's a favorite in millions of homes. Parquet is one of the finest of all energy foods you can serve. And it's also a reliable source of vitamin A. Every pound contains 15,000 units of this important vitamin. And in my family, parquet margarine's a very special favorite because of its fresh, sweet flavor. I think it's a grand buy, Mr. Lang, whenever it's available. That's why I always make it a point to look first for parquet. Sometimes parquet margarine may be hard to find because of the big demand. But Kraft is making all they possibly can with present supplies. So if you want to help make your food dollar go further, look first for Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. The delicious quality spread for bread made by the Kraft Foods Company. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Fortunately for him, Mr. Peavy has turned out to be not only a good friend, but a persuasive one. So we find Gildersleeve, Judge Hooker, Floyd the Barber, Chief of Police Gates, and Mr. Peavy seated around Gildersleeve's dining room table, with a bright light shining down on them, neatly stacked chips in front of each player, and an almost new deck of cards in circulation. You're some host, Mr. Gildersleeve. I lost three dollars already. The evening's young yet, Floyd. Well, I've never seen such a run of luck as you've been having. Well, I'll admit, I've been lucky. Lucky at cards, unlucky at love. <laughs> You're right, Floyd. But believe me, I'd rather have it the other way around. You must be crazy. No, I'm not. I win a few dollars at poker. What of it? You have a happy home, security, someone to share your joys and sorrows. Only a bachelor could say a thing like that. Now, look, anybody knocks my wife, I'll give him an argument. She's as good as anybody's wife. She has her good points. Well, she did have, anyway. But here's what gets me. It's your deal, Floyd. Keep your shirt on. You're ahead. Here's what gets me about my wife. I never can tell what she's after. And they're all the same. Am I right, Chief? I think I know what you mean. Certainly. Or I'll leave it a peavy. Hey, Peeve, does your wife ever come right out and tell you what she wants, or does she sneak up on it by the way at Denver? Mrs. Peavy uses both methods. Well, you're lucky. 
She I never know where I stand. Like last week, for instance, she was after me like a tiger. We had to have a new washing machine. A new washing machine. That's 140 bucks. Cut the cards, Peef. I cut them five minutes ago. Oh. Well, I said to Lovey, I said, look, Lovey, try to get this through your head. We ain't got 140 bucks. That doesn't sound like indirection to me, Floyd. Well, you're here. Yesterday, she comes up to me and she says, Floydy, I got the old washer fixed for only $16. Can I have a new coat? <laughs> you know what I think? I think she was after the coat all the time. If she'd asked you right out for the coat, you'd have complained anyway. I did. It's not important, Floyd. You married men have something solid you can build your lives around. Something to give your lives direction. I get plenty of that. <laughs> when you're sick, who takes care of you? When you're discouraged, who cheers you up? When you come home tired after a day's work, who stands there ready to welcome you? Lovey. Hazel. Mrs. Peavy. There you are. But me? I come home to an empty house. Oh, poppycock. You've got the best cook in town and two fine children. It's not the same as a wife, Horace. It's not the same. Oh, you make me tired, trying to behave as if you'd sustained a tragic loss. If Leela meant so much to you... Why didn't you ask her to marry him? I did. I was engaged to her. You know I was. At the time you were engaged to Leela, she was married to Beauregard Ransom. Well, I didn't know that. I made my proposal in good faith. Yeah. But have you ever proposed to her since she became a bona fide, legitimate widow? Well, maybe not in so many words. Uh, no, I guess I haven't. Uh, and stop complaining. Would you mind dealing for her? Excuse me, fellas. <laughs> Hello? I'll be right over. Hey. hey. Good on, I'll be right over. Goodbye. Gildersleeve, I must say, since we're here as a favor to you... And I'm out three dollars as I sit here. Oh, please, I'll be back. There's Cokes in the icebox. Where's my hat? Oh, on my head. Uh, see you later, boss. Well, how do you like that? What am I running for? She won't be ready. Yeah, but what do I care? Hey, Leela. It's rock on your darling to come and get me like this at the last minute. Well, no trouble at all. Well, if you'll take my bag, I guess we ought to get started. Uh, this all the baggage you've got? Mm. Can't be more than a couple of handkerchiefs in there. Oh, there's a few little things. Gracious, I guess I'll have to ask you to lock my door. Uh, did you bring the key? Key? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Here. It is, can't seem to... You have to push down a little. Why, well, honey, your hand is shaking. <laughs> I'll get it. There. Well, are we all ready? I guess so. I'll just put your bag in the back. All right, Leela. Pile in, and away we go. Mm. Well, uh, what's the matter? You forget something? I was just taking one last look at my little house. We have time, haven't we? Time? Oh, sure. Yeah, go ahead. It's really a sweet little house. And I've had some awfully happy moments in it these last five years. What are you thinking, Throckmorton? Your leaves need raking. Let's get started, shall we? I hate having to hurry for a train. Leela, what's the matter now? Nothing, Throckmorton, only let's get started, please. suppose this is the last time I'll ever see West Fifth Street. <laughs> There's Shaw's Bakery and Melsa's Hardwire. Yeah. You know something, Throckmorton? What? I told you a fib on the telephone. The fib? Mm -hmm. You did? How? I never sent for a cab at all. I was going to send for one, but, but then I thought I'd rather see you. Well, gosh, why didn't you ask me sooner? I might have been out. I don't know. But I'd, I'd been kind of thinking all day. I was thinking we never really got to say goodbye to each other. You thought that too? Oh, 
Oh, it was awful this morning. Like two strangers. You're right. That's just what it was. Two strangers. But we're not strangers, Rock Martin. We've been very, very good friends. Yes, we have. We've been... <laughs> Didn't see that car. Rock Martin, would you mind holding my hand just till we get to the station? Well? <sighs> Let's just sit here for a minute, shall we? Sure. I've got my ticket and everything. All I have to do is get on the train. Yeah. Got your uh, Pullman reservation? Oh, yes. Upper nine in car 64. Upper? Uh, couldn't you get a lower? Oh, I always buy an upper. It costs less, silly. And then occasionally I meet someone who insists on trading with me. Yeah. <laughs> what a girl. Do you think you'll miss me, Throckmorton? You bet I will. I'm afraid I'm going to miss you, too, sometime. Leela? Yes, Throckmorton. Nothing. We've had a lot of fun together. Do you remember the time we went on the picnic out by the old haunted house? Sure. And we took off our shoes and stockings and, and played in the brook. And then we lay on the grass and looked up at the great big white clouds. I remember. That was a perfect day. Perfect. Until that old cow came and chased us away. Yeah, it chased you away. You thought it was a bull. So did you. But you were brave. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Do you believe in fate, Throckmorton? Uh, fate? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. I never thought much about it. I believe in it. I think that fate throws people together for a reason. It's not just accident. Oh? Huh? How do you mean? Well, just think. If I hadn't come to Summerfield, I never would have met you. That's fate. Uh -huh. Yes, you're right. I never thought of it that way. And now, just because I went south for the summer, fate has decreed I'm to be married. It's... It's almost uncanny. If I hadn't gone down there, who knows? I didn't know you had this deep side, do you, Leela? Oh, I have. I don't often show it, that's all. Leela? Yes, Throckmorton. I'm afraid that's my train, Throckmorton. Yeah, that's right. Uh, whistling from Moore's Junction. Uh, can you get my bag? Yeah, uh, I'll get it, Leela. not my train, is it? No, that's just a switch engine. Your train won't be here for another minute or two. Another minute. And then you may never see me again. Leela. I'm sorry. Leela. Yes, right, Lord. About this fellow, Julian Henry. Would have it made any difference if I'd asked you to marry me? Yes, Rock Martin. It might have made a great deal. There's my train. The train that's taken me to my wedding, Throckmorton. <laughs> I feel terribly alone. I'm a little frightened going down there to marry Julian Henry. I don't really know him so very well. He's terribly nice, of course, and he's built up a fine Say, 
Lee Strockhart. I didn't say anything, Leela. Did you hear what I was saying just before the train came in? I'm frightened, Throckmorton. Maybe I shouldn't rush into this. Leela. Oh! I said I'm frightened. Maybe I shouldn't take this Leela, train. Leela, I'm sure you're going to be very happy. You get used to Julian Henry. There's nothing to be nervous about. Now, here's your little bag. Now, you get in the train and have a good night's rest, and you'll feel just like getting married tomorrow. You don't have to shove me. Goodbye, Leela. <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again very shortly. You women who are trying to serve good, nourishing meals within limits of the family budget know how important it is to keep a sharp lookout for the best values in food. And that's why we've been reminding you to look first for delicious, nourishing parquet margarine when you shop for your family spread for bread. Among good energy foods, parquet margarine is one of the finest, made of rich, wholesome farm ingredients and fortified with important vitamin A. Yet, parquet usually sells for less than half the price of costly spreads. Right now, all the parquet craft can possibly make with the limited supplies available is being distributed as fairly as possible to food dealers all over the country. So be sure to look first for delicious, economical parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going over to Kay Kaiser's College of Musical Knowledge a little later tonight. Try to win a few dollars. So stay tuned to the Senior Network, and I'll say good night to you later. <laughs> good night. Oh, I... Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley as Leroy, Lillian Randolph as Bertie, and Shirley Mitchell as Leela Ransom. Judge Hooker is Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand plays Mr. Peavy. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. tried Habstept, the cheese food that's really different. Rich and mellow cheddar cheese flavor, easy to serve in a variety of tempting ways. Habstept spreads easily for sandwich making, melts smoothly into an appetizing golden cheese sauce, and it slices in a distinctive way, for Habstept can be cut into neat wedges when chilled for serving with desserts. Why not buy both varieties of this delicious, nourishing cheese food? Ask for Pimento Habstept in the red package, and golden cheddar pabstep in the familiar round yellow package. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.